Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates. I'm going to share with everyone an exclusive interview I had with a neighbor, a neighbor that lives right by the house in Moscow, Idaho, where the stabbings happened, four college students brutally stabbed in the middle of the night in a home. I spoke to a neighbor that lives right behind the house and he provides a lot of insight. It's a good interview. You need to check this out. Let's go. Hello. Hi, Kanan. It's Jonathan Riches. Thanks for taking my call and um, agreeing to an interview with me. How are you doing? Uh, doing all right, I guess. So tell me what's going on. You are a neighbor of where these stabbings happened. Yeah, I live like right around the corner, I guess. I can see the building where it happened from my driveway. Okay. Um, I didn't know anything had happened. Uh, it was around noon on Sunday mm -hmm. that I was driving home and saw a bunch of the like cop cars and ambulances and was kind of weirded out of like what was even going on. Yeah. Um, but besides that, I hadn't like the night before I hadn't seen anything. Um, I already had two detectives come to my place and ask me as well if they or if I had seen anything unusual or anything like that. When they came to your place, what do you mean your home or your work? My my home. Okay. Were, did did they go? Did police? Did you see police go to other neighbors' homes? Were they going from door to door? Yeah, it looked like they were going door to door. They knocked on my door. They knocked on the apartment right next to my door. Mm -hmm. um, but the girls that live in the door or in the apartment next to me haven't been home since like this happened. They'll swing by for a few minutes to grab stuff, but they haven't been home. So I've kind of been wondering, like, if you know. Everybody in the neighborhood is just kind of like left due to the fact of nobody feels safe and yeah. I don't have that option. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to ask you that, but um, for like when the police came, like what what were they asking you? Like were they asking you about surveillance? Where were you at? Like what kind of questions were they asking? Yeah, they they asked me. Um, I'm going to guess the standard routine questions when they're canvassing the neighborhood. They started off saying that they. Uh, we're canvassing the neighborhood, asking everybody that lived in the area if they'd seen anything unusual, heard anything that night. Um, they did ask me, like, what I was doing that night, which I was at home with my girlfriend at the time, and we yeah. were in bed when the um, supposed, or the, around the time that the murders had happened. Yeah. Um, and they asked me if I could hear cars driving by from inside of my apartment which unfortunately most of my apartments underground so i can't hear much that goes on outside of it um mm -hmm. i had told them that the uh usually on weekends that entire neighborhood um the king road and queens road area mm -hmm. is just big party central i mean i can hear the music from inside but other than that i really wasn't hearing anything yeah. is that on a regular occurrence like does that happen regularly yeah it, it was usually every weekend that there were parties since it's happened i haven't there hasn't been any parties for obvious reasons yeah wh where were they party at that house or other houses there or that house particular or up you know the whole i wasn't exactly sure what houses it exactly mm -hmm. um there's a large apartment complex that goes along the main road right there yeah. um, that i've seen a lot of parties at and i know up king road there's a couple of different buildings that party but i haven't gone walking around and seen exactly what houses were partying yeah have you ever met the, met these um any of the occupants of the house have you ever talked to them before no um the only like neighbors i've met are the ones that are directly in my building yeah um besides that i try to just keep to myself for the most part yeah so that fraternity there's a fraternity frat house there right by there yeah uh across the street from where like the murders happen like uh that main road um there that hill yeah um, i think it's uh, uh, sigma sigma chi I think so. Now, from that from that fraternity, have, have you ever seen like people walking from King Street to that fraternity, like back and forth, like through you know through the grass there, or 
you know. Um, yes, um, that is something for like the parties that I've seen a lot of like the uh, frat and the sororities along there. They would walk down that hill, across the grass, and then go to either the King Road area or the main road there and go to the parties. Because I know that U of I is a dry campus, so that that's like right off of the campus ground. So they're oh. able to you know, drink and party. And that's it's always been since. Uh, U of I became a dry college. They've uh, that's always been like the party central. When did they become a dry college? Um. Oh, I don't want to. I I'd guess probably about six to ten years ago. I I honestly wouldn't know. So I'm assuming it's a thing with all the the university students to get housing there, or that's the where that's the spot the party. <laughs> yeah, as because, far as I know. Do do people like park on the street there from the frat houses? Do they? Is there cars? You ever see like cars fill the streets there? Yeah, um, like Halloween night, there was tons of vehicles parked all and up, uh, up and down our road, um, going to those parties. Is that um that's Taylor or King or what? What road is that? Taylor, right? Um, I think it's Taylor, the main one that, like, King branches off onto, and then it goes up and turns into Walento, which is where I live, around yeah. that corner. So, so basically, is all the neighbors around there right now are just scared? I know you told me that in email, that you're scared, uh, fearing that, you know, there's a killer on the loose, or killers. Yeah, and, like, that's, that's something that moscow's never really had i mean we've had a couple of homicides or murders in town but Mm -hmm. nothing like this before especially with not having an answer within a few days um like the last one we had was some guy shot up arby's in a real estate a real estate place like years ago i think it was like six or seven years ago now i believe it's 15 Um, 2015 was the last homicide i believe that's what they were saying oh wow so i guess it's been a little longer if if that's the same one I, i i don't know yeah and then the one before that, I was young when it happened, so I don't even know the year that that one happened. So this isn't very common for this area, and it's quite alarming and concerning that, you know, the, the police haven't really had any form of information or nothing new for us to go on. And Does that um, frustrate you? Does that, that, what's your thoughts about that? Lack um, of, lack of information. That. Sorry, what was that? Lack of information, lack of updates. Yeah, this more along the lines of just lack of information that they're sharing. Because, like, when they first came out and did that first press conference and said that, oh, this is an isolated attack, there's nothing to worry about, uh, I just was like, I don't believe that. And the guys here, I work at Napa Auto Parts, and we all have been, you know, trying to see what the news says or if there's any new information and the lack of information is something that's kind of frustrating especially being i live alone so it's it's kind of i don't know worrisome and i mean as i'm sure you know um my address is a public say public information yeah and i that's that's one of the, that's one of the things i did want to ask you and i and, and i'm definitely objective here i'm not going to judge you or anything like that you know and i i know that you are a registered so um and that's why i asked you when i was emailed like did they come to you just because of your past just you know to question you no they actually when the detectives came to my door they actually didn't even know anything about me mm-hmm. and i had told them i was like um i do have a, a 10 o'clock curfew every night due to the fact that i am on felony probation they asked me what my why i was on probation and when i told them what my crime was they were like oh okay like it wasn't nothing big wasn't anything to look into type thing yeah, well, I'm sur- I'm shocked that they didn't know. You know, you would think that they would go door to door and already know who they're speaking to. You yeah, know. you you'd think they'd have an idea of like who lives there or something, but um, it didn't seem like they had any idea of who was living where or anything. No, and I and I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so like, do you have confidence in the police that they're going to solve this? Um, I want to say yes. But uh, given two weeks that has already gone by, and I mean, we don't know what kind of information they do have. Um, And with today's technology and everything else, I mean, you'd think with DNA and the FBI being involved and everything else that they would at least have some form of lead 
and it just kind of well let me ask you something as a resident like okay so to get out of that neighborhood you would have to go down taylor all the way down to main street yes is there... um i usually so like leave my place i'll go down taylor or the rest of will into, into taylor and then i'll take that first left to go more into campus do you know if there's like traffic um street cams or surveillance cameras on the on the street lights at those corners do, do, do you see any unfortunately i don't think there's any kind of street cameras until you get to the main roads where the mm -hmm. stoplights are but that's really like when the because i did like a google map and i saw at the end of taylor was like a gas station there like a gas station and um main street and I saw yeah. that the gas station had like surveillance there. And I'm just wondering, like, there's only a few ways to get to that King Street address, correct? Correct. And you would think that, you know, whoever, if someone came in with, you know, a car or a vehicle, whether they came in or out, they would be seen on some surveillance somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess that like the U of I also has some like street cameras and stuff. Yeah. Um, but as far as i know um the only way that might not have cameras would be up over the uh the hill that goes like up to the kibbe dome and to the other side of town yeah now so, um, but, but yeah go ahead i'm sorry no i was just gonna say but besides that um i know that the gas station does have uh, exterior cameras and the street light right there um where Pizza Hut that does have street cameras. Okay. Um. Prior to the to, to the stabbings, have have you ever seen police around there for calls of like fights or disturbances or anything like that? Um. Probably like a noise disturbance. I've seen cops there a couple, like handful of times, uh, just because of like you know noise is too loud, music too loud, people are drunk, you know stuff like that. When, when's the last time you um, saw that? Uh, probably a couple weeks before the murder happened. Oh, really? So they the police were called there to that area? Yeah, into the area. I don't know if it was the exact address that the murders have, took place, but I know that I had seen, you know, lights from a cop car down the street from me, but... So has the area been quiet since the stabbings? Like, is there partying or anything? What's going on? What's the scene like now? Um, right now, everything's been pretty quiet. Um, the week, the first week after it happened, we were having a ton of car traffic coming up the street, pulling into my, even into my driveway and like turning back around to drive back down. I think people were just driving around to kind of like see what happened, like where it happened. And, um, a lot of times, as as possible. Yeah, a lot of times that's like yeah. spectate, spectators or media, yeah. maybe, or just curiosity <clears throat> people that are just coming. Um, have you seen a lot of media there? Um, I see more media outside of the police station and at the U of I, uh, signs. So what's your thoughts, like, if this doesn't get solved soon, like, are, do you plan to move? Do you plan to stay there? Or are you just going to be, what's your next steps? Like, be extra vigilant, get some cameras, gun, what, what's going to, what's going to go on? Oh, well, unfortunately, with me being a felon, I can't own weaponry. Yeah. Um, but that would be one of my next steps is to have some form of, like, home defense due to the fact of this being, like, so close to me. Um, I've thought about trying to move, but moving in this day and age is kind of hard. Yeah. Um, but I make sure that if I go outside, you know, my lights are on. Um, I don't leave my house past 10 o'clock anyways. Yeah. Uh, my, I always make sure my doors are locked, my car is locked. I'm taking extra precautions and being, like, more careful on walking things. But I sh I besides should. that, I don't have much of an option. And and you know you're a you're a grown adult adult male and you're even saying that you're scared you know so that shows how the magnitude of what's going on there when you have guys and adults scared and you know don't know wh who's out there what's out there and what's going on you know that that's that's yeah. big. It is, and what makes it a little more uncomfortable is we don't know why these people were murdered, like what caused the attack. Yeah, and 
Um, I don't mean to bring my crime into this, but like I've always been kind of worried that I would be a target due to the fact that my stuff is already public. Yeah. And I just found out from my coworkers that one of the news stations had me and the two other sex offenders that live in the area plastered all over the news, and it's quite unnerving because, like, say if the killer is not just, you know, picky on who he's murdering or she is or, you know, whoever it is, um, what's to stop them from coming to my place or my neighbors for that matter or, or you know, striking somewhere else in town because my dad, um, he lives all the way across town, but, yeah. like, I still worry about his safety. So, because uh, I, I know attacks like this, yeah, it happened in my neighborhood, but it affects the entire town safety and not yeah and not only that and you know people might see your name plastered or you know run your name and then just think oh he's a suspect you did it because of your past and then start sending police to your house you know saying you got to question him or you got to talk to him something in that nature too do you do you fear that i do and uh like when the detectives first showed up at my place i was quite nervous that like i was already a suspect because of my crime because of my history and I was like, I, I was home and like I had somebody over. So I, I know that I, I'm good because I have a solid alibi and everything else. But it's the fact that people jump to conclusions, especially when in, in situations like this where there's not enough information given to the public mm -hmm. that the public starts turning on itself, trying to, you know, weed out who the killer is. And the first people that are targeted are people with criminal history. Yeah. Um, I, I get it. I, I, I totally get it. Do you know who owns that house by any chance? Have you ever seen the owner, the actual owner? Um, I do. Who Who's the owner? Um, so my landlord, it's his daughter. Mm -hmm. But the landlord is Chuck. Oh, crap. I can't remember his last name. Um, I know his daughter is something Delphus is her last name Delphus. so they they own what they own a bunch of homes there um i know she owns this one and then chuck uh he is the landlord to several apartment complexes around the area have you seen him come around have you seen any of them come around to see what's going on no um i saw chuck he came into my work the other day and uh he made a comment about my upstairs neighbor saying that there was had been a lot of uh, car traffic um, the week after things had happened and asked me if things had quieted down a little bit and it, and whatnot but other than that um he came by i think the week before to like clean our gutters and stuff so yeah well um i'm not not to get personal on your rent but what does like rent go for around there like what 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 is the rent prices around there um, I know my rent is extremely low in comparison to a lot of the other apartments. Yeah. Um, I, I live in a single bedroom, like studio apartment. Um, but I know that like a lot of the apartments like on clean road, the big apartment complex at the top of clean road, they're like six, $700 a month, if not more. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, I think the lowest one is probably around six fifty, six seventy five, and up and higher for that area so i'm wondering how much they paid for that house like to rent that house the whole house I'm trying to yeah i have no idea who or how much the upstairs neighbors um paid because they i've got one of the bottom apartments and then there's one other bottom apartment and then the top floor has the whole like an entire house yeah per se um and i know that one is quite a bit more than what i rent for did you um did you see police talking to any of the fraternity people? I have not. You have not. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you for the insight. Just trying to get some insight of, you know, the area and trying to, you know, just get a perspective of the neighbors of how they feel, the situation. Anything else you want to add? Um, just that I really hope that we start getting more information and they either find the person that's, you know, guilty of this or something and i also do find it kind of weird that there were two roommates in the house that were sleeping on the bottom floor mm -hmm. when the murders took place so it's like what the hell's going on guys so that does concern you like two roommates 
that police have said most likely are not involved. You just find that odd. Yeah, because, I mean, well, in my opinion, like, stabbings are very personable. So it, it feels like the person that did it knows these people. Um, and if, and it was, I read somewhere that there was, that the victims had defensive wounds, mm -hmm. which if that means, if that's the case, and that means there was a, you know, noise, there was a ruckus inside the building. So how do you go, like, if you're sleeping downstairs and people are r rustling around up above you and getting killed, like, how do you, how do you, how do you not wake up to that? I know. I, I, and, and I heard there was a dog. Well, there was a dog in the house. Oh, did, I did not know that yet. You never saw a dog or any animals around there? I mean, there's a bunch of college people that have animals that walk up and down. I just don't know, you know, what house they belong to. Yeah. All that right. would make sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. your name is Kanan, right? Is that how you say your name, Kanan? Yes. Okay, Kanan. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the conversation. You be safe, and uh, hopefully this gets solved soon. And so there you have it, everyone, a interview with a neighbor that lives right by the house. He can see the house from his house. He provides a lot. He shares a lot of insight about the area beforehand, afterward, what's his thoughts, his feelings, his emotions, a lot. So let me know uh, anything in the comments, suggestions. Maybe we'll speak with him again. What happened? Communities on edge, four people, you know, brutally stabbed inside their home. A lot of people are uneasy right now in Moscow, Idaho. Praying that authorities will solve this soon. Praying for the victims' families. Everyone be safe. In the meantime, travel in pairs and stay vigilant, everyone. God bless.